So in this screencast, we're going to talk about the basics of how to use fsolve. Now, fsolve is a built-in function in MATLAB, and it's used to solve systems of nonlinear equations. And by systems of nonlinear equations, I mean things like n by n systems, systems with n equations and n unknowns. To contrast, f0 can only solve one equation with one unknown, or one by one system. So in other words, fsolve can so solve systems of the following type, something like f of x comma y equals zero, together with g of x comma y equals zero. This here is an example of a two by two system two equations, two unknowns. The two equations are f equals zero and g equals zero, and the two unknowns are x and y. And so by solving this two by two system, you're basically asking the question, what values of x and y make both f and g equal to zero, both? Or in matrix format, you might have <clears throat> a vector f, which consists of many functions, let's say f1, f2, f3, dot, 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 fn, and then you might have an independent variable, the vector x, which consists of x1, x2, x3, dot dot dot, all the way up to xn. So in that case, the system of equations that you're solving can be compactly written as the vector f of the vector x equals to the zero vector. And this, again, would be like an n by n system. Where each one of these little f1s, f2s, etc. is a single equation <clears throat> with n variables in it. Now, using fsolve, if you know how to use f0, using fsolve is very similar. So what you want is you want to call fsolve with a function handle first as a first argument. And then, then this, as a second argument, you have x0, or your initial guess. Now, the initial guess is a vector, just like your independent variable x is a vector. Your initial guess for x is a vector. And the output of, of fsolve is your roots, or your vector of roots. That is the values of x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn, which make some function, which I haven't told you what that is yet, make some function, the vector value function, equal to the zero vector. Now this first argument, this function handle, it's analogous to its usage in f0, and this function handle will point to a function that you must have written. And this function has one vector input and one vector output. So for example, this function f equals my function of x, where x, this is again your independent variable, and it's a vector again, and the output f, capital F, is like the left-hand side of your equations, and again that's also a vector. And when I keep saying, well, these are vectors, it's because they are represented as vectors. So you have n unknowns in a vector and also n equations in that vector. Now, of course, you don't have to write it this way. You could have uh, the input variable be capital Y or lowercase y. You could have the output variable be capital G or little f or whatever you want it to be. But this is just typically how it's done. Capital F equals my function of capital X or capital Y sometimes. So to make things easier, let's take a look at a simple example of fsolve. So consider this two by two system of equations. We have f of x comma y and g of x comma y, and you want to find the values of x and y that make these both equal to zero. So to do this, we're going to write a, um, an m file, which is your function. And into that function, we're going to put the following commands. So to see that, let's go ahead and go over to MATLAB. 
So here I am in the M file editor and I'm writing a function. So it starts out with a word function. Here's my vec, what will eventually be my vector valued output, capital F, the name of my function and my vector valued input, capital X. So the way I want to unpack this is um, just to make the code easier to read, I'm going to say little x is equal to capital X of one and little y is equal to capital X of two. Now that I've defined my independent variables, x and y, I want to define my equations. So little f is equal to, as it is in the written out in the example problem, 2 times x minus y minus e to the power of negative x. So that's my function f. And my function g is 2 times y minus x squared minus e to the power of negative y. In the end, my output variable has to be capital F, which is my vector value, my vector of equation evaluations. So in the end, I want F, capital F, is equal to the vector F, little f, semicolon, g. So it's a column vector. So this is what my function would look like. Now, there is an alternative way to write this function, and I don't recommend that you do this because... The way I recommend writing code is I, I recommend writing it to be as easy to read as possible. So, for example, alternatively, we could have written just a single line of code here. So you don't need, you know, lines 3, 4, 6, 7, or 8, or, or 9. It could all be written in just one line of code, just like this, and it is the exact same execution. But the problem is that this code is really hard to read, even though it's very compact. And so if you have a mistake in your code, it's really hard to go back and try to fix it. So I don't uh, recommend writing it this way. So at any rate, let's save this function. And I've saved it as function underscore fsolve underscore example dot m. And it is saved in my current working directory in MATLAB. So to swing back over to the notes, of course, after I write my function, the next thing I have to do is actually write the script that calls fsolve. So that's what we'll do next, and the script will contain these commands, as we see when we swing back over to MATLAB. So here's my script as I am going to write it. So I saw, saved it as script underscore fsolve underscore example dot m, again, in my current working directory. And the first thing I want to do is I want to define my function handle. So I define some variable f handle, which is equal to at function underscore fsolve underscore example. And so now, stored inside this variable f handle, I have the call or the, the pointer to the function that I want to use. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call um, an initial guess. So I'm going to guess little x equals 1, little y equals 1 as my initial guess. And then I'm actually going to run f solve. So capital X, that's my final output, is equal to f solve of my function handle comma, my initial guess. And at the end, I'm going to display my value of x. So when I run this in MATLAB, this should work. So what does it look like when I run it in MATLAB? I'm going to go ahead and click Run. And what it says is, equation solved. It gives me this whole bunch of output. This is the output that fsolve automatically gives you when you run it. And then at the bottom, this is my display of x. Now, there's something interesting to note here. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how MATLAB decides to do this, but this um, capital X vector, let me go ahead and just show that again, this capital X vector, which is my, out, which is my output of fsolve, ended up being a row vector. Part of the reason why it ended up being a row vector is that my initial guess was a row vector. So even though my function, its output, capital F, was a column vector, for some reason, because my initial guess for X was a row vector, the output of fsolve was a row vector. So I can change that by making the initial guess a column vector and then running it again. And then it spits out the same gobbledygook here after fsolve, but then my disp or display of x gave me the column vector, which is what capital X is. So now back in the notes, this is the script that we just wrote and then ran. And then again, running it will give you this kind of output. And there is your display of x. Now, if you don't want the um, all of this output to be shown on the screen, there is a way 
to suppress the output. And the way to do that is to define some variable, which here I call it options, you can call it whatever you want, equals to, and then you call this function optim set, and then say, in quotes, display, comma, again in quotes, off. So what that does is it tells uh, fsolve, if you make the call to fsolve this way with a third variable, options, it tells fsolve to not make that kind of output. So just to quickly look at that over in MATLAB, I made this extra line in here where I've defined this variable options equals optim set display off. And now I just put that in as the third parameter in the call to fsolve. This is an, like I said, it's an optional parameter because you're giving it options. And then when I save this file and then run it in MATLAB, we can see that the function ran and gave me my output x because of my disp command, but it didn't spit out all of this other information. This is going to be especially important if you're going to run a call to fsolve over and over and over again many times in your uh, solving maybe many different variations of the same uh, set of equations. And so just to note, this is the options is optional third parameter. Okay, last thing to note by, uh, before the end of this screencast is um, if you've seen how you can call F0 with, quote, extra parameters, the way to do that in fsolve is exactly the same way. So you have your, um, you have your first variable, which is your handle. You have your second, which is your initial guess. You have your third here, which is your options. And if you don't want to give it this command where you're actually giving it the variable options here, you can put a little placeholder as little bra open brackets. And then here are all of your extra parameters.